Jim Tony Burke's role a few weeks ago and also, as Steve has said, part of Greg Combe's role uh, as the Climate Change Minister as well. And I think uh, it's quite it's quite important that uh, in the reshuffle that the new, well, the new or the new again Prime Minister Kevin Rudd uh, put together <laughs> was to connect climate change back with the environment uh, as a portfolio rather than the connection it had with industry policy uh, when Greg Combe had the portfolio. So it's an absolute honour to uh, take up the work that Greg had been doing in climate change and to take up the environment, heritage and water work that Tony Burke had been doing uh, for the last three years. But this was one of the events he said I should definitely try to get to. Uh, he has been in close correspondence with a number of the community groups here, uh, I know, because I've uh, had it handed over to me, about the Leadbeater's possum, about the, the round leaf pomoderis, and there's a lot of work that I've assumed that Tony hadn't quite finished about that. For example, uh, approval of the round leaf pomoderis, isn't it, Steve? Yes. The approval of the round leaf pomoderis to, to be uplisted from endangered to critically endangered. That's the possum. That's the possum. That's the possum. <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about that after. Because there is a great about the round leaf pomoderis. Uh, the possum, yes, uh, Burke, Burke has written to the Threatened Species Scientific Committee to fast track a consideration of an assessment to see the possum uh, uplisted from endangered to critically endangered as well. Uh, and, uh, and we are continuing to work with Cindy's government about an updated recovery plan for the possum as well. So there's a good deal of work, much of which stems from the, the uh, strong advocacy and the strong ongoing pressure from community groups in this beautiful part of Victoria for us to focus more on these uh, critically endangered species. Uh, I just really want to thank you all for coming out and for inviting me to be a part of this event. I can't think of a better event to do on National Tree Day than to Yay. open this boardwalk and go and see such an extraordinary tree. We don't have trees like this in South Australia, as some of the South Australians in the crowd would tell you. I feel quite at home. I've already caught up with someone I danced with uh, as a 13 year old at the Blue Light Disco. Uh, I caught up with a very old school friend whose dad went out with my mum in the 1970s free love period. So I've really settled right back, uh, right back into a sense of community here. Congratulations to everyone who has been a part of this project. I know it comes out of a very difficult time from the 2009 bushfires, the funding of this project and driving up from the airport. Uh, for the first time really, I spent a good deal of time going through some of the affected areas and the scars from the bushfires are still so, so strongly apparent. But this part of Victoria uh, clearly, um, clearly was, was preserved uh, and it's a wonderful thing to be able to go up and see the giant tree uh, and to have that symbol of resilience, have that symbol of resilience right in the middle of the central highlands. So thank you all for the invitation to be with you. I look forward to going up and having a look. Am I yeah. cutting the ribbon? Um, just wait a moment, because Cindy's going to come up and join us. And Cindy, <laughs> um, you'll probably all know Cindy McLeish, um, MP for Seymour, state MP for Seymour. So welcome, Cindy. Thank you for joining us thank this you. afternoon. And this afternoon, Cindy is actually representing the Victorian Bushfires Appeal Fund, which actually funded this project. So Cindy is going to say a few words about VBAT. Thank, Thank you, Cindy. Steve. Um, Uncle Roy, I acknowledge Uncle Roy and the other anyone else from the traditional clans, uh, Tanaran and Wurundjeri. The south of the divide is the Wurundjeri and north of the divide where we are is Tanaran. Distinguished guests, so many community members from Tulangi and visitors from elsewhere, welcome. I'm representing Pat McNamara who is the chair of the Victorian Bushfire Appeal Fund and he was unable to be here today but this project is yet another of the community projects that have been able to be done following the devastation of the fires. Now I want to reflect for a moment from the number of people who gave so generously to the Bushfire Appeal Fund. With interest, that total ended up being over $400 million from the generosity of people from locally, within the state, nationally and internationally. internationally. That $400 million is the biggest, the single biggest charitable donation ever made in Australia. And it's really very extraordinary because people felt so much that they needed to contribute. And through 
that extraordinary, extraordinary generosity, there has also been a spirit of community that's developed to also to give. And it was my pleasure a couple of weeks ago to be in Flowerdale, um, a, a community project driven by King Lake Arts, where all the craft work, quilts and knitting and all various scarves and gloves and blankets and things were put together by locals who were then giving it to Tasmania and it was collecting all of those to put on a boat to take to Tasmania to distribute to the people there who were impacted by fire. And I know that the Talangi Knitters, and I know some of you are here who are involved in that, and it was a therapeutic process, but from what they received to now working to give to others who have suffered like that is really um, quite a remarkable you know, full circle and I thank everybody for having done that. This project is one of very many which also connects people to nature and the first time I visited this tree, Steve remembers, he drove me through the forest showing me all of the um, bits and pieces and we went and saw this tree that has such history and who would have done it? put it in such context other than Steve and all those <laughs> Shakespearean moments and things like that. So thank you, thank you for the community workers that have all driven this initiative and also to the staff of DSE, now DEPI, D-E-P-I, who are here today that worked to actually construct it. So it was funded through the generosity of so many and put together through the what was the DSE and I thank them for their work and uh, the work that they do in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. I'm going to invite the Minister to take the scissors and just on this one occasion. Yes, sir. Just on this one occasion, we're going to ask the Minister to cut the green tape. Oh. <laughs>